Advanced Pilot Training T50A Solution. This is our second Facebook Live broadcast. My name is Anisha Miller. I'm a Senior Program Manager for the Ground-Based Training System, and today we have one, with us one of our test pilots. Hi, my name is Elliot Clements, call sign HEMO, and I'm a Lockheed Martin test pilot on the T50A program. In our last Facebook Live, we focused on the T50A cockpit. The T50A is a upgrade to the T-50 Golden Series. It has more than 150,000 flight hours and it's the only production ready aircraft in the competition for advanced pilot training. We are ready to go on day one with the T-50A and with our ground-based training system. Today's focus on the ground-based training system is from our Lockheed Martin Final Assembly and Checkout Facility here in Greenville, South Carolina. We're going to take you through a small snippet of a day in the life of a student and we're going to talk about how they progress through their learning. Training starts here on the ground. And we start with our interactive multimedia instruction. The student progresses through that. Then they move on to the ground training devices. And once they've mastered that, they move on to the aircrew training devices. So let's get started talking about interactive multimedia instruction. So for those of you who don't know what interactive multimedia instruction is, it's a lot. Also known as IMI. It's your basic courseware, your computer-based training, uh, your instructor-led training or any other self-paced training that's interactive. We have in front of us today Linda who's working on one of the lessons that we developed for advanced pilot training. This is the before start engine task. As you can see, we've developed the training to give interactive feedback to the students so they know if they're doing something wrong immediately. This software that you see is our Lockheed Martin prepared flight simulation software. This software is device ag agnostic and can be run on any Windows-based device. And it can be available 24-7. And part of our IMI solution, we have electronic publications, again, that are available 24-7 to the student. So they can go home, look at their publications if they have a Surface or any other tablet device, take notes so they can come in the next day and be prepared to start their day of training. In addition, because our software is device agnostic, we can bring in any type of device. So now we're going to move on to some virtual reality goggles. We have O'Shea demonstrating the goggles. These are goggles that can be bought in any retail store. And we were able to take these goggles that we bought from a retail store, hook them up to a basic PC, put on our prepared flight simulation software, and now as a student, they're able to get more situational awareness to their training. So, did you have VR goggles when you started your initial training? Uh, no, hardly. Uh, so my background is as a Navy carrier pilot. I have about 3,000 hours of uh, military uh, flight time. Um, most of that, uh, I've flown 28 different aircraft, uh, training aircraft-wise, T-38, the T-45, the T-2 Buckeye. I've also flown the F-18 and the F-35. And most recently, I've flown the, uh, the T-50A. Um, and I've really enjoyed doing that over the past year. So. What makes this different, and what I really like about this building block approach, is you first teach the pilot the knowledge, okay, and then you move on to individual tasks, and then you combine that knowledge with the tasks, and you develop his procedural knowledge. And what that does is it really gives him uh, efficiency in the cockpit uh, for procedural training. And when I was in school, we didn't have that, so um, we just had flight manuals and we had old uh, musty workbooks that we had to work through, and. Um, not until we got in the actual cockpit of the aircraft uh, could we actually go through the procedures and find the switches and that sort of thing. And that led to a lot of inefficiency and some irate, impatient instructors in the back. Okay. And next we're going to go to, um, as Hemo just mentioned, as we build on those blocks, we're going to move into our ground training devices. For ground training devices, there are three types of devices. There is an air crew ground egress trainer known as an AGAT, which gives you ground egress training. There's an ejection seat trainer, where you practice ejection seat training. And then finally, there's a part tax trainer, where you have familiarization and procedural skills training. Um, the benefit of our solution is we're offering two variations of the part task trainer. This is a desktop part task trainer. Um, the beauty of this, again, it's running that same software, so a common software baseline. Um, we just added a stick and a throttle, hooked it up to a laptop, and then hooked it up to a TV. So think about today's student pilot. Right now, they're 15, year old, 15 years old today who will eventually be in the Air Force. They're used to PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, the new Nintendo that just came out. This gives them that realistic gaming environment, and this is something they could practice at home at the end of the day after training. And again, available 24-7. 
So O'Shea is demonstrating kind of the moves, and what we also like about this is, again, you can practice your moves with the throttle. So this is giving you some relevant spatial awareness. In addition to the desktop part ties trainer, we also have a glass cockpit variation of the part task trainer. Now this part task trainer really gives the student that relevant spatial awareness and training in a seat. So did you have a part task trainer when you were doing training? Uh, no. Um, so when I was in training, we had a plunger, uh, we had a chair, and we had a poster of the cockpit up on the wall. Uh, and we had an imagination, okay? And that's how we did our early training. Uh, wasn't very effective, didn't teach us efficiency, didn't teach us proficiency. Uh, what I really love about this system is that uh, you can take that home with you. You can fit this in a squadron ready room area. Um, in addition, with this PTT here, you can uh, go ahead and, and do those complex uh, situational emergency procedure training missions um, while the student pilot is flying. So you're introducing workload where he has to focus on flying the airplane and going through his checklist and finding the switches and actuating those appropriately. Or you can do something as simple as just train a student pilot on the local area familiarization or local area procedures as well. So um, I really like this system. So with this part test trainer running the same software as when you started with your IMI, the student can go get their feedback. A part test trainer in a glass pet form is also 10% of the cost of a high fidelity simulator, which means it's saving to our end customer. In addition, you can also practice 50% of the training tasks, which means we're going to have a better prepared and trained student when going into the air crew training devices. So now we're going to move on and discuss our air crew training devices. For the advanced pilot training program, there are three air crew training devices. The first is a unit training device, which has a static motion seat and a 50-50 uh, visual acuity and then we have an operational flight trainer and a West weapon system trainer those are your high fidelity simulators the only difference between the two is the field of view 360 versus 300 degrees they are offering a 2025 visual acuity um, in it and then when the students are in their air crew training devices that means they're actually flying in the cockpit in the sim we have an instructor operating station which you see here the instructor operator station allows the instructor to give that real-time feedback to the students and it allows them to modify the training scenario as necessary so if they see that the student is off or needs to be moved they can actually magically transport them in time to the place that they need to be or closer to the target in addition we have developed a drop-in operational flight program capability that allows our ground-based training system to run the same software as the aircraft. And we can upload this software to the ground-based training system within two hours, which is quite phenomenal. And when we're doing an embedded training live virtual constructive exercise from this instructor operator station, we can real-time communicate with the aircraft. So how would that have been a benefit when you were doing training? Oh, it would have been, been a huge benefit. And so let me just tell you, I just got back from a training mission a couple hours ago, and we used this whole system where we flew two live aircraft and the simulator linked in virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and we did air-to-air air 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 intercepts, and we also did uh, air-to-surface attacks. And it works phenomenally. Um, two things that can't be uh, overemphasized about this um, system that we have here. One is, like you mentioned, the fact that the OFP, the operational flight program, the software for both the simulator and the aircraft can be updated near simultaneously. We did not have that uh, when I went through training. Um, we were always, the simulator was always delayed in their software release. And so we were never training uh, in the simulator that was identical to the aircraft. And so that provided some negative training in a lot of sense. Um, the other big thing is the fact that we do have that live virtual constructive aspect to it where we can data link um, a simulator uh, to live aircraft and the simulator can actually participate in live aircraft exercises much like we just did today. Um, there are a lot of benefits to that. Uh, if you think of the basic solo mission where a pilot's going out for the first time in a new airplane for him in a new range that he has really gained experience in, uh, he can actually be monitored. He doesn't have to be alone. He can be monitored by an instructor pilot in the simulator can fly on his wing virtually, okay, and can make sure that he stays within the confines of the airspace and help out in case he has an emergency and things like that. That is a capability that is just mind-blowing. It's something that we didn't have uh, when we went through pilot training. That's awesome. And our air crew training devices, keep in mind, we are training the fifth and 
right, sixth generation student pilots. So we have the 2025 visual acuity, which is currently greater than the visual acuity on an F-35 program. And we've demonstrated that capability here in Greenville today. And again, this embedded training and live virtual constructive, we've demonstrated again, which is an objective requirement of the advanced pilot training procurement. So after the student finishes their training scenario, then we go to the debrief control room or system. Um, we've modified what it would look like because we're all in the same place for today, um, but this is an actual, what a similar of a debrief room would look like. Sometimes they're in classroom format. This allows the instructor to talk with the students and give them real-time performance feedback. You can pull up the cockpit video, you can stop, play, press, rewind, and you can see exactly where you did things really well, or you can see where there are some areas for improvement. And this allows the students and the instructors to have a better experience. We wanted to capitalize on every hour spent in training, and we've taken some very unique and innovative approaches to do this. And in addition to the debrief, what I like is you get to pause. So you see our pilot Grizz in his happy, shining face. It looks like he may have been having a problem then, so we have to investigate in our debrief session with him. So today we've given you just a quick overview of what our ground-based training system solution is. We believe we have an innovative uh, next generation training solution that can support fifth generation pilots and sixth generation pilots. So if you had a ground-based training system solution like the T-50A, how would that help you in your training? It would have helped a lot. It would have helped um, really condense the training pipeline and it would have helped teach us more quickly, more effectively, and more efficiently. Um, and like you said, here at the ground-based training system, it's where uh, T-50A training really begins. And with this system that we have, I believe, I really do think that um, you, we can teach the pilots those, that basic knowledge, the, uh, those task skills, and those procedural skills, so that when he does get in the actual aircraft, we're maximizing that aircraft time uh, while he's airborne. So at this time, we'd like to open it up for questions from anyone on Facebook Live. And I think we have our first question. We got a question from David. Um, do you find fast jet pilots prefer motion or no motion when sim training? Well, David, um, I'll tell you, when we, as, jet, as fighter pilots, we typically train in sims that do not have motion. Um, Motion sims are generally reserved, at least in my experience, for commercial pilots who are trying to get a type rating because in that uh, sector that you can actually get qualified in an aircraft just solely in the simulator. Uh, fighter pilots, when we train the sim, we have a slightly different purpose uh, or use for the sim uh, than getting uh, completely qualified in that aircraft. Okay. Um, we have another question um, from Leslie. Is the GBTS used for any other training? Absolutely. Lockheed Martin has been in the training and simulation business for over 40 years. We currently provide training to programs such as F-35, C-130J. We train in over 29 countries and we've trained over 500,000 pilots and we've delivered over 700,000 instructor hours. And we have our next question coming up. Let's see, a question from Mark. Um, so will this system change the way pilot training is accomplished? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, after you've seen how this system operates um, with all the different building block uh, skill sets we have, it, it, from the way pilots are training currently and the way I trained when I went through flight school, this will be a huge difference. Um, what it will lead to uh, essentially is the fact that pilots will uh, get trained quicker uh, and more effectively. Okay, we have another question coming up, and they're coming in real time, so if it looks like I'm pausing a little bit, it's because I'm trying to get the real-time yeah, feedback, the joys of Facebook Live and te technology today. This question is for uh, Chip. Tell us more about virtual reality. So um, I'm very uh, pleased to say that Lockheed Martin has taken um, some huge steps in our prepared software. It's the software that you see running across this uh, interactive multimedia instruction table that I took you through in the glass cockpit part test trainer and it is really leveraging the next generation of virtual gaming and giving that real life relevant experience that is applicable to the 15 year old student today that will be working on uh, T50A. Another question. You're not done yet. <laughs> no, I'm not done yet. Um, this is question is from David. Does this, 
does this system sim simulate other aircraft F-35-22? I won't say it's, this does not simulate this. The advanced pilot training program is specifically for the aircraft that we are pr uh, proposing, which is the T-50A. However, we are leveraging the training that we've done for the F-35 and F-22. And because this is one of the, the only fifth gen training system that is in use today, we're able, able to have all those lessons learned and apply it and give a more innovative uh, solution for advanced pilot training. Another question from Brett. How long have you been a pilot and what made you want to become a pilot? Well, a lot of movies made me want to become a pilot, I suppose. Um, I've been a pilot, a military pilot, a uh, flying military aircraft for about 21 years. Um, I started flying when I was 15 years old. I actually soloed my first airplane uh, before I had my driver's license, so my mom had to drive me to and from the airport. Um, and then I grew up on boats. Uh, my dad was a boat mechanic, and I just love boats, and so I mashed the two together and uh, decided to join the Navy and become a naval aviator, and uh, mm -hmm. fell in love with it. And uh, it's been a great career ever since. Okay. It looks like um, we're coming up on our time, so I want to thank you for joining us today and learning a little bit about our advanced pilot training T-50A ground-based training system. We thank you for joining. Um, more broadcasts will follow this year. Please follow us at Lockheed Martin to be notified of later broadcasts, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.